It took me 10 years before the light bulb went off and I said, oh, I understand fire alarm now. I understand it now. So if you're in a position where you're trying to understand how to troubleshoot and actually get better, I get it. I was there. It's going to take time. It's going to take repetition. It's going to take practice. But don't worry. Fire Alarm Expert is here. And that's the reason why I put these videos out, because when I was coming up, there were no videos. There were no help. I had to figure this all out myself. So I'm going to fast track your life so you can make more money in the fire alarm industry. So in this video, I'm explaining to you how you can troubleshoot mat faults. And there are four different types of mat faults that I came across. But before we get into all the mat faults, I want to explain to you what this is here. And you probably came across this if you're working on the EST3 system. And what we have here is an EST3 Cab 7. So they have a cab seven, a cab 14, and a cab 21. And all that mean is that each one of these bays will be, it will be two of them or three of them. You may see the small panels, the medium sized panels, or even the large panels where it will have three of these components in there. And the seven refers to the slots that it has. But if you have a CPU, which is this here, the CPU takes up two slots and then a the slot starts from here, which would be one, two, three, four, and five. But usually here would be your power supply. And then every other card after that can be either your loop controller, your mod com, or amplifier. You could have a, many other cards here to expand your fire alarm system. So if you have a loop controller here and you're working on a map fault, you could either directly connect to the loop controller or you can connect to the CPU which we have here, you can connect to the CPU here, but if you connect to the CPU, just make sure you select the network option, the radio button network, so that way you can download over the network. From here to the loop controller, essentially is like a network connection, so that's why you have to download it as a network. But if you directly connect to the loop card, then you will be able to make all your changes locally to that loop card. So let's get straight into the video so I can explain to you the four types of map faults. Many businesses have out Dated security systems that take up huge amounts of storage space but really don't understand how they could get good quality video that takes up less space on their hard drive it's only after it's too late they're trying to retrieve footage that they can't get because of a system overwrite if you're looking to upgrade your old outdated security system secure it securities has the perfect solution for you with our no truck rollout system, we reduce unnecessary service calls in the event you have a camera issue. With our remote management system, we can troubleshoot most IP camera problems. There's 24 seven notification where the system will monitor all activities for all the cameras, all your NVRs, if there's any camera outages, if there's any slow connections with the cameras, if there's any issues with the PoE switch, if there's any issues with the port or wiring, the system will give us a notification for each individual issues we're having with our camera system. So don't wait until it's too late. Click the link below to upgrade your outdated security system. The first type of map fault would be just a generic or your regular map fault. You coming in on a service call and the system says, you have a map full. You pull your laptop out, you upload the loop, and you see nothing. So what do you do at that point? Most people will just download back into the loop controller and just say that the map fault is clear then wait for the map to map and it'll probably clear at that point but that is not what you want to do what you want to do is once you upload the loop you want to commit the expected that whole tree so once you commit that whole tree each icon would turn blue to let you know that you had made some changes so once you do that you go and compile you compile all of your loop controller databases or you just compile that one you're working on depending on how many map faults you have if you have one you just worry about the one loop card you compile that information and then you download back to that loop controller because what you're telling the system is that the software has a good map. Here's the good map. Now I need you to redesign this map so that way we can clear this map fault. Then once you download to that, you want to make sure you diagnose your status. Don't run out the door at that point. Go to your status and diagnostics, connect to the loop card and wait for the system to actually map all the way in and wait for the map to complete. Once the map is complete, you have one more step. You need to upload that complete map so that way everything in the software and everything that's in the field is the same. So if I go there after you, I don't have to make any adjustments. Everything match on both sides. And the second one is a map fault if you have a bad device. Now, this is typical to the EST2, but you can get this on the EST3. And these are the very quick fixes when it comes to a map fault because the system is telling you that, hey, Tampa switch module number 121 is in fault. Go change that device. So once you change out that device, again, don't run out the door. 
grab your laptop, connect to the loop controller, upload it and match the new to the old device. So that way we now have a clean mat, download the changes, wait for the system to mat, then upload the changes or that complete mat back to the software. So both sides match. Don't be the tech running out. I'm going to say that a lot because I see a lot of techs come into the building, change out the smoke is done and walk out the building. And now the system is mapping. They all the way up in the Bronx now, half hour later, a map fault came in. Now they got to come back down and uh, fix that map fault. So don't, don't run out the building. Just do what you got to do. Pull out the laptop and map that in once you change out any devices. Now, the third one is that's going to piggyback off the second one. You'll get a tech to come out, change out a smoke, problem is fixed. You get another tech come out, change out a pull station, problem is fixed, another tech module and all these different things. This will happen and go on for months. So now I will go there, upload the loop on a map fault and either find out that there's like 19 devices that's red because now these all devices did not actually map in. So now I got to go through and match all 19 devices. I either got to physically make sure these 19 devices are what they are and they match exactly to the location that they're supposed to be in. And then I got to configure each and every one of them. Once I do that, then I got to repeat the steps to commit the loop, download the loop, wait for it to map it, then upload. When you guys, when you go there for the first time, I don't care if you're changing out one device, pull out your laptop and map that one device in so you don't have future map faults and I don't have to come there and fix things after you. All right. So the last one is the more infamous one, right? And the last one, this is one of the more difficult map faults to work on. This is sort of like a ground fault. And the way I troubleshoot this, I'm not going to play no games. I pull out the SIGA MFT. And if you don't know what the SIGA MFT is, this is a loop analyzer. What you can do is take off the loop off the loop card, hook it up to your SIGA MFT and run the analyzer connected to your computer through USB. Now, what I do is I run it at least three times. So that way I can get at least the best information because you may get one device and then it may drop off the next time and then it may come back. So I at least run it three times. And then that third time I list all, I don't care how many devices there are. I list all of the devices that that MFT say that's in trouble or have a problem, may have a problem, have the most extreme problem, whatever it is. And what I will do is I will go to each and every one of those devices, cut the wires, restrip it. If I have to, I'll change the base, I'll change the smoke. Essentially, the resistor is not being seen by the CPU. So the map is not able to build itself because each of these bases have a resistor. The CPU is reading resistance from device to device in order to build the map. So if the resistance is off up or down, it's going to give you a map fault. So you either clean the terminals or replace the device. However many there are, of course, you got to get this approved. If it's a lot, go to the customer, let them know this is money for the company. You may generate some extra income for the company. You don't want to go willy nilly just replacing 20 devices because you got 20 smoke detectors. You really do need that approved. But what I'm saying is if there are a bunch of devices that this MFT actually pull up, your job is to go through each one. You don't have to change each one, but physically go through each one, strip those wires, use an eraser, uh, scrape off the terminals, do your due diligence, hook it back up and then see if that clears the map fault. If it don't, your next step is start to replace those devices and that should clear your map fault. So those are the four types of ways that I've came across when it comes to troubleshooting map faults and the different types of map faults. Just don't be the tech that's running out the door as soon as you change a device, because that usually is one of the main problems when it comes to map faults, other than, you know, water leakage and things like that. So use your laptop, be more cognizant of what you're doing. You get eight hours, right? You get eight hours. So stop rushing. That's what one guy told me. I used to rush a lot. So I had to slow my pace down and that's when I actually started learning how to do fire alarm. So if you want to get better at fire alarm, you go to my website, fire alarm training center is there for you. You can learn everything about programming, NFPA, anything that I have to offer when it comes to fire alarm and security, meaning card access, burglar alarm, and also security systems. So you can get more money in this fire alarm industry. I'm the fire alarm expert. I'm out. Peace.